Hey y'all, so I have a 2001 Audi TT, uh, it's the 225 version, uh, the 1.8T engine, uh, 6 speed manual transmission. Uh, the other day I was on a, a little little trip out to see a friend, um, and as I was driving I lost the ability to shift into 5th and 6th uh, gear, and as I pulled into my buddy's driveway I lost uh, pretty much all gears, I was stuck in 2nd stuck in, <clears throat> uh, gear as far as I could tell at the time. So I had to get it towed back, um, and I tried to do a little diagnosing at the time, and I wasn't able to really figure anything out, but I have since done the research and found a few things that hopefully will give this thing back on the road, so I hope to make a video to kind of show everyone how that problem can be fixed. So upon first seeing the problem, I wanted to check a few things just with the transmission. Because of the fact that I lost 5th and 6th, I first had worried that I might have lost, lost a shift fork inside the transmission, which I was worried about as I was doing some research on this car. Um, but I hadn't heard any other any other issues with the transmission as I was driving as I could still shift into the first four gears just fine um, So I was less worried about that So what I decided to do when I had a minute was take out the air box There's other videos on how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. You don't need many tools um, And I just came down here and I checked the shift cables. I'll try to get some better light <clears throat> um, And as you can see here all of them are attached and even just kind of poking around on them. They seem to be just fine um, and then I can also shift the transmission uh, manually. Oh, I'm right there, but I can shift the transition, transmission manually. Um, I'm not going to worry about changing the selector. I'm just going to shift it like that. Um, so that kind of gave me some hope um, originally. So then I decided that it, the problem sounded to be essentially only with the actual shifter. So I've done a little disassembly so far, but nothing that's actually going to solve the issue so um, this will look a little unfamiliar but you can see some of the parts down there the new bolsters are gone uh, and I've moved the boot up so far um, well after I towed it back to my house I was able to actually get the car into gear and into reverse uh, through the normal methods of you know shifting um, but then I was I was moving around and I lost all ability to shift actually except for right now it seems I can shift into those gears and these ones. So um, that's what I found so far. And then once I shift into fifth, it actually just happened right there. Now I have nothing. Now I have no gears until I go back and I'm into third and fourth. For a second, third, fourth. Then I go into fifth and I lose it. But when I go back over, I should still get it. So, and I might be able to get it into second actually as well. Or reverse, actually. I mean. So it looked like I was able to do that. So a little bit of a weird problem, but uh, what I did is order a new bushing kit for down here. So I'm gonna have to remove the center console, all of this. And you can leave the shift boot technically on, but I'll move that just so I don't ding it up or mar it. Um, and I'll have to go through the side of this uh, shifter housing here and attach some new bushings on that. So here's a kit you get from Diesel Geek. You can see there are a couple bushings that'll replace both the actual shifter bushings and selector bushings. Um, it's about $33 on Diesel's, Diesel Geek's site. Uh, I'll throw a link in the bottom afterwards. Um, but this is what I hope to be the solution to the problem. Hey y'all, so I just got done with removing the center console out of the Audi. You can see I have it placed right over there. Um, there's a couple of tutorials online on how to do this, so I won't show the entire part, of course, but I'll just give a brief overview. Uh, first, what you'll have to do, do is remove some of the shifts around, around the shifter. Then there's a front trim piece which is this item right here. You'll have to go ahead and, and pop that out. I would use a trim removal tool, which you can see I have one right there. Uh, then you'll have the cup holders in the back. You just pop out the little rubber grommets on the bottom and you'll see two flathead screws right there. You're gonna wanna pop that out. And then from there, there'll be a harness that goes onto the bottom. You'll have to remove those two screws there. They're just a regular Phillips head. Um, so go ahead and do that and then you can pop that out pretty gently. You might need a trim removal tool to help pop out this main piece. Uh, up front in the, in the kind of front little uh, storage tray, you have these, this button panel. Uh, this you can pull out by hand and then you can see on the back there's two uh, places where the electrical harnesses go. You can see those two right up there. They're pretty easy to take out. You just use the two tabs on the side. Again, another pretty typical uh, Volkswagen Audi tool. Uh, then what you'll need to do is remove two T25 Allen, or sorry, uh, Torx bolts that go right there. Um, but 
Next, you'll need to take out the button panel that goes right here. That'll be the one to lower your roof or lock your doors. Again, you can pull that out by hand, but you'll have to remove these harnesses. Um, you can use a little uh, pick tool to help unlock these two little tabs. You can see the one there. And then there's also one on the back side here. Help remove those and then pull these out gently. You might need a little bit of force, but uh, just take your time. You don't want to risk breaking them or breaking anything on that. You can see this is also be a good time to uh, detail the interior. Uh, but to get the rest of the, oh, you also need to remove the electrical <clears throat> connector for your passenger airbag light, or you could just push it through. Um, there's two little tabs actually on the back side of that. I want a breaking one here on the inside of that. Oh, sorry, I didn't have the camera on it. Uh, on the back of the trim piece there, I did break one. So just again, be gentle. Uh, to remove the actual console, you'll have to remove the back panel here. Uh, this can be done by first popping off the shifter cover, or sorry, the speaker cover there. Just use, again, the interior trim tool and just be gentle with that. There'll be four T25 bolts on the corner. Pretty easy. And then from there, it uses the metal hardware, the metal retaining clips that are, again, pretty common in Volkswagen and Audi, especially on engine covers and things. You can see two of them there by, for example, and then you have four more on the bottom. Uh, I, I use the pry tool, an interior pry tool, to take that out and you can just pop that guy right out. Uh, and then from there, you can pretty much slide, I would move your e-brake all the way up, then you can slide the center console out and pop it right out from there. There will be one more retaining bolt, or retaining um, kind of sleeve here for this uh, passenger airbag light that'll be on the in interior of the center console, so just pull that out. Uh, and then when you're done, you can move it out. Be careful of not moving your shifter or not damaging your shifter. I haven't taken it off now. It's kind of fighting me, but uh, so I'm leaving it on for the time being. Um, and then you'll pretty much get what you see here. Again, just be really careful of those electrical uh, harnesses. Uh, there will now be a bezel, which your shift surround goes around that I've taken out. Those are pretty easy. I believe they're uh, eight millimeter bolts that you take out. You can see it right here. And then you'll get to this current phase. All right, y'all, so the next part you're going to have to remove is this bracket that holds on to the center console. Uh, you'll need to remove it to get to the access hole for the shifter. So to do that, there's a couple bolts. I have it kind of removed so you can't see the uh, the studs coming through these holes, but there'll be two 13 millimeters here, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter there. There'll be two 13 millimeter nuts there. There's two 10 millimeter nuts right there, as well as two 10 millimeters in the back. Then you'll have to remove the two parts that secure on this bottom console cover. Pop those out with just an interior removal tool or a metal pick if you're just cautious so you don't scratch it. There'll be two T25 bolts on either side, so just go ahead and remove those. To make this easier to remove, what I did is I just cut two little slots really quick in the carpet right here just so it would pop up. Um, just made it a bit easier to remove, and then this bracket right here you'll also have to remove or push back to allow it to clear this bottom edge right here. And then you can go ahead and just pull it right on out. So here it is, I just removed the shifter stock from the car. Um, you can see here, no bushing, it's totally clear. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of show this part really quick. So there's the <clears throat> side bracket for the selector. There's a T25, in the last video I was incorrect, I said it was a T20, it's a T25 that goes right through the middle, through that guy that threads Sorry, through that guy that threads into here. And then there's this retaining spring that you have to kind of undo around this little shackle here in order to get it out. And then you can just pull out the shifter stock. Uh, there's a little opening right there that allows you to kind of rotate it and twist it out and pull it right on out. And then you can see down the bottom, there is the cable that's totally loose and part of the bushing that has deteriorated and totally fallen away. And there's the other half. So we'll go ahead and get the diesel geek parts and we'll put them in. So here's the shifter stock. I have it out on my workbench. Um, so I've took the diesel geek, geek kit. I've put some of the selector bushings aside and right now I just, uh, I cleaned it up a little bit, just a little bit of rubbing alcohol, um, the joint right here. But this is right where your uh, cable actually connects to your shifter housing. <coughs> Excuse me, your shifter stock. So what I've gone ahead and done is again, cleaned it up and I've just slid the shifter bushing on top. The diesel geek video goes over this entire part. So it's not really necessary for me to go over this cause I'll link it in the description, but uh, you just snap this right on top. You can see it's got a small uh, cut down there there. It's just a little relief cut that allows you to snap it right on top. You can see it's pretty firmly in place. And then uh, we'll just go ahead and we'll put this back in the car. Uh, you also need a pair of uh, C-clip pliers 
for the C-clip that will be on the end of this. If you realize in the inside of the car, there is a little cap that actually would go right on this outside ridge here that would used to retain the old bushing and cable. Uh, the diesel glue kit, you don't need to worry about rescuing that, so you can just leave that be. The, the circlip here will do that job exactly. So I'll go ahead and bring this back in the car and I'll put it in place and uh, I'll show you how it goes from there. All right, y'all. So I just followed the Diesel Geek video in terms of reattaching the bushing on the bottom of the shifter stock. And in kind of combination of working between these two uh, holes here, the one the factory ones on that side and the one that I've cut out here, uh, I was able to reattach that cable, uh, the cable end to the linkage, uh, kind of move the whole shifter up, and then I could put the C-clip on the outside of that bushing. Um, I actually wound up using just regular needle nose pliers, small needle nose pliers, because my circlip pliers actually were not good enough to uh, reach all the way in there and I kept dropping it so I had to remove the shifter stock, reach down there with a pair of uh, hemostats and grab it out. Um, but that is what, that's what I did to get that there. I just started up the car and tried it out and it shifts great. So now I'm going to start reassembling the interior, kind of redoing everything that I've already done so far. And uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes from there.